This object is part of the Mabubian collection of Elamite items. Dr. Benjamin Mabubian carried out over 100 excavations from the 1930s onward. He passed away in Tehran in 1968, the day after his 100th birthday. Roya, Benjamin's granddaughter, kindly offered it to my scrutiny and gave me the rights for its publication, for which I am very grateful. This small drinking vessel is made from a thin sheet of silver, around half a millimeter thick. The technique used for the depiction of the scene is both repoussé for volumes and chasing for details. The joining is almost invisible to the naked eye. No metal analysis was made. One would be forgiven for ascribing the scene to a variation of Sumerian art. While this may be true for the general outlines of bodies depicted, specific details conclude to a distinct and conspicuous form of Elamite art which might have preceded some of its Sumerian models. Although similar scenes are known both to Sumerian and Elamite cultures, we may agree that they are contemporaneous with one being from the early dynastic II period in Sumer, and the other being the proto-Elamite period in Elam, placing Elamite art, possibly at the origins of Sumerian stylistics. The harp is probably the oldest form of stringed instrument, and would owe its origin to the archer's bow. A hunter would have observed that if a calabash was gouged out, it might have been his empty water gourd and placed somewhere along his bow. Then the vibrations produced by the string when it was plucked became amplified. This was simple enough, and the principle would be as old as the bow itself. It follows that from a crescent-shaped frame, probably one of these typically bent and hollowed-out calabashes, which constituted the body of the early instruments. A series of strings would have been stretched, allowing for space between each one for the fingers to pluck freely, without disturbing the other strings. The strings would originally have been made of gut, but strings made from other fibers might also have been used. Initially, the infrastructure would not have allowed for more than a few strings, as the iconography generally shows during the Uruk period. It is reasonable to assume that the strings on one instrument were all of the same section as they would have been made of twisted gut from the same species of animal or from other vegetable fibers. Essentially, the Elamite harp came from the musical bow, where the resonator mouth or gourd became the sound box with its soundboard made from raw hide and with more strings added. The bow would have been made from the straight branch of some strong and flexible wood, probably of the same kind which provided wood for archers' bows. The bottom section would be the largest, making sure that the top section is not too thin, as this would have weakened its stability under the tension of about nine strings. Obviously, the mass and section of the strings would have been chosen in function of the stability of the bow under tension. The silver vessel shows a curved soundboard sitting on a curved soundbox. However, we contend that this was an aesthetic decision from the silversmith, because a curved hide soundboard would be unstable if it sat on a curved soundbox. However, the soundboard might have been made from wood, making that curvature possible. However, this proposition would be unlikely for the following. The strings would have had to be of a small section to avoid imposing too much tension on a slender bow, and as a consequence only a very thin. Soundboard could have amplified the vibrations of the strings. Thin wooden soundboards under one millimeter of thickness would not have been easily made at that time, and if such were made, they would have been very unstable under alternations of low to high hygrometric levels resulting in cracks and distortions. This is why rawhide soundboards were the preferred media for soundboards in antiquity. The thickness of hides especially from fish, would have been less a tenth of a millimeter and would have been as a consequence ideal for the sound amplification from the vibrations of thin strings. Furthermore, since the bow of the Elamite harp is slender, a series of high tensility strings would have bent the bow excessively. Thus, a satisfactory equation between parameters of soundboard thickness, string tensility and bow flexibility would have been essential to a successful organology. We would also add that the flexibility of the bow would have allowed for pitch bending or vibrato effects. It is unfortunate that the Elamite language has not yet produced a name for that remarkable instrument. Thank you very much for your kind attention.